Good morning, everyone, and thank you for starting your day off with me. I'm Jenna Stauffer. Everyone has a story, and every so often I run across a story that I feel has to be shared. My first guest this morning, his story will move and it will inspire you. He's a professional wakeboarder and kiteboarder, but it's not the dangerous stunts he does that sets him apart. He's an amputee, the world's only professional amputee, kiteboarder, and wakeboarder. He has faced his challenge with so much optimism and has managed to turn his tragedy into something terrific. Sean, thank you for being with me on the show today. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Sean, it is so great having you here. I was so moved and inspired by your story, so I, I do thank you for coming on. Thanks again. <laughs> no worries. Sean, it was about 10 years ago when your life changed drastically, didn't it? Oh, yeah. Changed for, for the better and for the worse, I guess, you know. And the worst part about it was I lost my leg and I was in a lot of pain trying to figure out, you know, how to get back to normal life situations again, be able to walk around and do everything and uh, took some time for me to get over that and uh, once I figured out how to wear the leg and have a mm -hmm. proper fit, I had to deal with some workman's comp issues and stuff like that, but uh, you know, I had found a good prosthetist, they've been taking care of me for nine and a half years now and mm -hmm. Haven't really had a problem since, no complaints, and they keep me running and going and, <laughs> and keep doing, me full blast. Doing all the stunts that our viewers can see behind us. Sean, how did the accident happen? I was uh, working at a fish house when I was 19 and I uh, was standing on the forks and the driver went up at this hill and the forks started bouncing when we came down the hill. My uh, feet slipped in between the forks and uh, ran my foot over basically and degloved it. I was fortunate that I still have my right foot too, so I mean, that one had a pretty massive injury on it as well, but mm -hmm. you know, the recovery took about five or six months and um, once I was able to get in the water again, I started training in the water swimming and trying, that was really good therapy for me and I would recommend that for anybody that Getting needs, in the water? Yeah, right therapy, after. water therapy is probably the best that you can have. Mm -hmm. So Sean, how soon were you able to get back on the kite board? Well, I didn't start kiting until like two or three years after my accident, but I started wakeboarding about a year after my accident. And okay. I heard about this uh, contest called the Extremity Games. My prosthetist, Adam Finniston, uh, told me about it. And I said, hey, you know, that's what I want to do. So I started training. I had some skills before I lost my leg, so I just had to relearn them all again and uh, figure out how to keep my leg on in the water. Mm -hmm. I used duct tape basically to keep my leg on. Really? And, uh, yeah, it took a little <laughs> trial and error and uh, made it happen and it's just been going with it ever since. And Wow. Wait, so now you said you didn't kiteboard before? No. So I, you didn't I, learn how to do this kiteboarding until after you had only one leg? Correct, yeah. That's crazy. But you had always been doing wakeboarding before. Yes. But would you say that this accident pushed you to even do better in wakeboarding? Yeah, I think it pushed me to do better in everything that I've mm -hmm. tried to do in life. and. Uh, I feel like that happens to every amputee, that they always have to strive and the motivation to be better than what they were before or better than able-bodied people because we're not anything different. We just have a different challenge in life and a different road to go through and you know, you got to overcome that and you can't just be down about it and say that's it, that's mm -hmm. it, you know, you have, you have to keep going in life and just because you lose a leg or an arm or something like that doesn't mean it's the end and there's so many good things and there's so much support out there for people like that. So mm -hmm. I think that's really helpful for being an amputee. It's mm -hmm. just having a lot of good support, a lot of family and friends, and mm -hmm. really uh, will help motivate you to get back doing what you want to do and enjoy life. Mm -hmm. Sean, you have such a positive attitude, an attitude that so many people should have. Did you have downtime though, Sean? Like where you were just Yeah, there's, there was plenty of downtime, you know. Mm -hmm. It wasn't easy, it was frustrating. Especially having to deal with the uh, insurance and workman's comp, they uh, denied me care for to see my prosthetist that I have. So that was a struggle. And once I was able to see him, I literally started running the first day, and that wow. that changed everything for me. I think was mm -hmm. from that moment on. But before then, there was a year, almost a year's time, where I was, you know, real depressed, real struggling. But I still like wanted to stay in shape and started training as much as I could either like I said, in the pool or lifting weights like I used to in high school. So mm -hmm. I think that was pretty helpful for me as well, to just to stay focused. And, mm -hmm. and you're staying focused. And we're going to take a quick break right now, but I'll be back with you, Sean. So stay with us, everyone. <laughs> 